One of rock and roll's legendary music producers is a murder suspect tonight. Right now, Phil Spector is out of jail after posting $1 million bail. He's accused of shooting a woman to death in his suburban Los Angeles home. Bob Wire, and uh, I found myself in a prison. I couldn't get out. What's going on everybody? How are you doing today? So, here I am, Los Angeles, California. I'm in just about Beverly Hills. Private drive, like Lena Drive. Private, gated. Now, I'm going to be doing the story of Phil Spector, Lana Clarkson, a little bit of Ronnie Spector. If you don't know who Phil Spector is, he's a world-renowned producer. He produced the Beatles, the Beach Boys, the Ronettes. He invented a sound. The man, I hate the word genius when it comes to certain, you know, he was brilliant. A brilliant record producer, but he was insane. He was crazy. He carried a gun around with them, threatening people with it all the time. He was an abusive man, and full disclosure, I'm a huge fan of his ex-wife, Ronnie Spector, who he just lost not too long ago. Loved her all my life. Thought she was beautiful, with one of the best voices ever. So the fact that the man uh, pretty much held her captive and abused her, I despise him. So, of course, Phil Spector became famous because he murdered somebody. Was it accidental? Was it on purpose? We're never gonna really know the full story because both participants, well, I hate to use Lana Clarkson, the victim, the victim, the accused and the victim are both deceased. I just want to stop here first before we get into the story of Lana Clarkson. This is a home up here where Phil lived with Ronnie Spector for a very long time, which she had to escape from. And it's gated. I'm gonna Go up to the gate, show you from the gate, and then we're gonna go past the gate because I've got some. I have some special permission. It's gonna be quick. I can go up there, take a couple of shots, and then I gotta get out. It's a very, very. Uh, there's only about five or six houses up the street, and it's one of the most exclusive driveway private drives in Los Angeles by far, and. Phil Spector's house is here. It's very impressive. So the gate is open right now, but that's because somebody came out, but I gotta wait for my contact to let me in. So I'm gonna let it close, but then we're gonna go up. So there's the gate closing, there's the call numbers. Like I said, so that's Phil Spector's house right there. And past it, there's only about one or two more houses. And the street ends, and the one at the very end, I believe, is under renovation. But right up there, that's Phil Spector's house. Was. Now, I know what you're thinking. I thought he had a giant castle. That's in Alhambra. Alhambra. <laughs> California, which we're going to. Ronnie Spector was part of a group called the Ronettes, and they were a popular live attraction around the greater New York area. After releasing a few singles without success, they tracked down famous record producer Phil Spector, who signed them to his Phillies Records in 1963. And the relationship with Spector brought chart success. Ronnie and Phil Spector began having an affair soon after she was signed to his label. Early in their relationship, she was unaware that he was married. After Phil divorced his wife in 1965, he purchased a home in Beverly Hills, this home where he lived with Ronnie. 
They married at Beverly Hills City Hall on April 14th, 1968. Ronnie changed her surname and became known as Ronnie Spector. Ronnie alleged in her 1990 memoir, Be My Baby, that following their marriage, Phil subjected her to years of psychological torment and sabotaged her career by forbidding her to perform. She said he surrounded their house with barbed wire and guard dogs and confiscated her shoes to prevent her from leaving. On the rare occasions he allowed her out alone, she had to drive with a life-size dummy of Phil. She stated that Phil installed a gold coffin with a glass top in the basement, promising that he would kill her and display her corpse if she ever left him. In 1972, Ronnie fled their mansion barefoot and without any belongings through a broken window with the help of her mother. She said, I knew that if I didn't leave, I was going to die there. In their 1974 divorce settlement, Ronnie forfeited all future record earnings, alleging that Phil had threatened to have a hitman kill her. She received $25,000, a used car, and monthly alimony of $2,500 for five years. She later testified that Phil had frequently pulled a gun on her during their marriage and threatened to kill her unless she surrendered custody of their children. Well, we've got uh, another stop to make. I'm going to stop at the House of Blues, the former location of the House of Blues on Sunset Boulevard, where Phil Spector met a young lady named Lana Clarkson. So the House of Blues, where Phil Spector met Lana Clarkson, is no longer. It used to be right there. That monstrosity right there, that was the House of Blues. This particular stretch of Sunset Strip has a lot of history. I mean, right there, that's a world famous comedy store. Every comedian has played there. Here, the Anna's Hotel. Once known as the Hyatt House, affectionately known as the Ryan House. That's where all the rock bands came and played, uh, came and stayed, I should say. And um, it was immortalized in the movie, almost famous. But yeah, that's the Hyatt House. But right across the street, that's where Phil Spector met Lana Clarkson. So let me get into the story a little bit more about Phil Spector. Like I said, he produced Tina Turner, Cher, the Ramones, John Lennon, you name it on February 3rd, 2003. Now he's a crazy looking dude. I don't, I don't feel bad saying that. He's just nuts to look at with all his various wigs and, and I, I just don't like the man, but I'm a little biased. I, I, I do appreciate what he did for the music industry and for music, but an abusive, murderous, allegedly man. Oh, look at the lights, come on. I have no respect for him. Lana Clarkson was working part-time at the House of Blues here in West Hollywood. She landed several lower budget film roles in the past, but she recently started waitressing to make ends meet. I believe she was making, uh, this night she was working as a coat girl. So they met in here and the pair rode in Spectre's private limo back to his castle, the Pioneer's Castle, and that's where we're going to be going at, at a certain point. And I'll tell you, once back at the home, the pair were alone for about an hour. It's likely, likely, that Phil Spector made advances on Lana Clarkson. She was beautiful, but she denied them. Spector then produced a gun, as was something he did quite regularly with various people, and put it in her face to attempt to stop her from leaving the room, as he had done before with other women who had denied him. He then accidentally pulled the trigger while the gun was up to Lana's mouth, which killed her instantly, scattering broken teeth across the floor. Spectre's driver, he called 911 and relayed to the dispatcher that Spectre had walked out of the house carrying the gun and said, I think I've killed someone. He was arrested and charged with first degree murder. So the initial trial resulted in a hung jury two jury members found him not guilty. In the second trial, uh, though, it was, uh, the charge was reduced to second-degree murder, and April 13th, 
2009, he was found guilty. He was sentenced to 19 years to life. And then, of course, January 16th, 2021, Phil Spector died from complications of COVID. So that's the story in a nutshell. And we're going to go take a look and see what we can see at that castle. And we're going to go visit Lana Clarkson's grave. One thing I want to say about Lana Clarkson before we leave this era. And one thing I want to say about the House of Blues. I, when it was around, they, if you've seen House of Blues before, they make them look like dive bars. Kind of. And really crazy looking, junky looking. But I think building a like making a building to look like an old junkie building is lame. That doesn't give a character. Like I just spent some time in Mississippi and Louisiana recently and I went into some cool places to film that were run down and all that sort of thing and that has character. You can't build character. Well, you can't build character. You know what I mean. But you can't just make something look. Do you understand what I'm saying? It seemed false to me. It seemed fake. But it stood right here. And I just never liked the look of it when I drive by. But that's just me. Maybe a few other people. It just looked weird. And not cool. One thing I want to say as I try to cross Sunset Strip here at Kings Road. Try to get across back to my car. About Lana Clarkson. A lot of people just uh, describe her as a B-movie actress. Phil Spector shot and killed a B-movie actress. That's really insulting to the memory of Lana Clarkson. She was somebody's daughter. She was loved. She loved. And we all have hopes, dreams, fears, things like that. She had them all. And she wanted to be an actress. And maybe she didn't get the role she wanted to be. There's nothing wrong with being a B-movie, you know, not the A-list type of movies you see. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to walk right in front of these cars. I don't give a shit. You're going to let me walk. Oh, you're going to let me walk? Thank you. Oh, I'm causing lots of sorts of problems. <laughs> They're getting mad at me. But, <laughs> they're all so mad. There's nothing wrong with making your living in that, in that, in that, in, the, in this industry, well, in there's nothing wrong with trying to make a living as an actress. And if you have to settle for roles that aren't your, aren't what you want, but you have to do them, there's nothing wrong with that. She's not just a B-movie actress. She was an actress. And she was, as most actors, struggling. Struggling to get the part she wanted and to be noticed and to get to show off her craft and show what she can do as an actress. I just want to say that because I, I, I always, it, she's always just described as a B-level actress, B-movie actress, and she's more than that. I do not know her. I don't know any of her friends. But I know that she's not just a one-line blurb. She's not just one line. The Spectre killed a B-movie actress. No, she was Lana Clarkson. She was a real person. And she didn't deserve that. Let's go. So here I am in Alhambra and I'm on top of a giant hill and the house is right up there. It's right at the top of the hill. I'm going to drive closer. Can't really see much of it. It has four turrets. You can see one turret there to your left. I know that he bought it like 98 for 1.1 million. Just sold like last year for 3.3 million by his ex-wife. But there is an entranceway. Oh, I just passed it. I'll go back and film that. But really can't see much of the house. It's the biggest property here in this uh, part of California, Alhambra, and uh, yeah, it's a compound. Like the wall going around it is crazy. We'll, we'll take a look. What's interesting also, there was all this 
regular houses all surrounding. And then in the middle, up on the top of the hill, is a castle that was owned by Phil Spector. Of course. There's more parts of the wall surrounding it. That's one type of, that, you'll see the other type of wall. Houses right past those trees. This may not seem interesting. I mean, this is the scene of the crime and I'm not able to show you much. I'll show you some aerial views, whatever I can find online and stuff. But to me, this is actually really fascinating because I've always wanted to see the house and I knew that you couldn't see much, but it's still interesting for me to see this and to know that what happened back there and also just what went on there before, before Lana's murder. I mean, he was an odd dude to say the least. Take a look right here as we're walking alongside the wall. This steep hill going down, and then looking out onto Alhambra. Alhambra! You can take a look right here as we're walking along the wall, and uh, steep hill looking out into the city here. We're about 25 minutes from Los Angeles, but we're far up a hill. So, this is the main gate. This is where he would go in and out. And here's where it says. I did say Pyrenees Castle. Yeah. Deliveries and inquiries. Okay. And it's just like you see through there, it's just another bit of a, uh, oh, Phil's pants. It's just a bit of a, um, more of this stucco type wall. There's a turret. Can you see it through the sun? I'm facing west right now, so in foot fort. Unfortunately, wait. Unfortunately, I can't can't really see it that well. But that's Phil Spector's front gate. Imagine living right here. Who's your neighbor? How are your neighbors? Oh, they keep to themselves. One of them is a crazy record producer from the '60s who just murdered a woman. Oh yeah, he lives in a castle. Really? Yeah. He likes to go to House of Blues at four in the morning. She is an adult. She is a female Caucasian. Police were saying little else about the woman in her 20s found dead in the foyer of Spectre's hilltop mansion. A luxury car was in the driveway. Police say it was being held as part of the investigation. A gun has also been recovered. Someone called 911 reporting shots fired at the million dollar home in the pre-dawn hours and it came as a shock to Spectre's neighbors. It doesn't say much or wave to anybody, just up, goes into that service entrance and that's it. Right this street is where all the news was set up and everything. It's the only entrance I could find. So, there's Phil Spector's house. It's insane. There's a giant Pikachu behind me. Let's go over to Hollywood Forever so we can pay our respects to um, Lana Clark's Hollywood Forever Cemetery over in Santa Monica in Hollywood. I've been there many times for many videos and I know exactly where she is. And we're going to go there to end the video. Let's go. One thing I noticed is there's this giant wall, this giant fence, and then there's another wall. Right there. Probably going around the house. He liked his security and seclusion. Well, he certainly got that for a few years in prison. Seclusion.
here I am in Hollywood forever, and I believe I'm in the right area for Landon Clarkson, the Columbarium, which is when you come in right on the right, and it's not open very often. It's open today, and I believe Lana will be right there. Wow, there we are. Reads a celebration of life in loving memory of Lana Jean Clarkson, April 5th, 1962, February 3rd, 2003. Your shining light will continue in the, in the hearts of those who love you. What we once enjoyed and deeply loved, we can never lose. For all that we love deeply becomes a part of us. Helen Keller. So if you're wondering, this is the urn for Lana and it says her name on top, Lana Clarkson. Her ashes are inside here. My goodness, she was a beautiful woman. And all right, as I make my way out of the columbarium, just like to say rest in peace to Lana Clarkson and thank you for watching. Love you all and peace out.